the recognition of the importance of diversity and inclusion and a company's overall ethics and values as it applies to the supply chain, I think that's fascinating and, and very is. encouraging, actually, because, you know, when you get people coming out of university, young people approaching the workplace today, you know, the value, the brand values and what a company is all about and what their, their ethics is extremely important to people. It's one of the most important things to people coming into the workplace. They want to align with that. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that extending that to, to the supply chain absolutely makes sense. And, and actually, I think it goes both ways as well, because there are going to be certain suppliers where, you know, they may be a very valuable supplier and actually they need to know that your ethics match up with theirs as well. Oh, oh, I think so. I mean, again, I think one of the things that we're going to see through the um, experience that we've been with COVID, I mean, undoubtedly, it's exposed the fact that extended supply chains, whilst they've been great from a pricing perspective, in terms of securing supply, it's been actually quite ruinous for some industries. Um, I, I mean, look at the disaster that we've had in the uh, Suez Canal recently. And now, if you look at the consequence of that in terms of the availability of supply, it's going to be really problematic. Look at the chip shortages that a lot of the electronic manufacturers are having and they can't access capacity. It tells me that what's going to happen is that we're going to see more, more onshoring and nearshoring um, rather than um, extended supply chains. And, and quite honestly, there is a shortage of capacity with the nearshore supply chain. So, you know, what's going to happen is that suppliers for the first time in a generation are going to start choosing the customers they want to do business with rather than vice versa. And, you know, if those suppliers are smart, they're going to be wanting to work with uh, with with customers that, um, oh, excuse me, uh, like everything in an in a Apple connected world, everything goes off simultaneously. <laughs> um, you know, they're going to, I think suppliers are going to want to choose companies that represent their values, where they're going to learn, where there's going to be innovation and growth for them beyond just making good margins. So I think suddenly the whole thing changes quite fundamentally and i think what you stand off stand for as a company what your ethos is has to be greater than than just historically might have been a very buyer seller transactional relationship and, and i think dni is one of those topics where i'm seeing a lot of acceleration and and thank god for it because my, my fear in the past couple of years was that it would be nothing more than a passing phase and nothing would really change but what I'm seeing now is a lot of energy in terms of really institutionalizing a mechanic and approach that is looking to really uh, encourage diversity and inclusion in the supply chain and Kantar is no different than that. Yeah and I think it's uh, it's fascinating when you actually break that down into a bit more detail and um, again something else that you've you've commented on in in, in the past is around um, cognitive diversity. Yeah different ways of thinking you know it's yeah. diversity is it's it, it, it's broad it's, it is, it's, it sure but is. It's, it's about having different approaches um uh, in all areas and and i think that i totally agree with that in terms of you need different types of people with different backgrounds and different approaches to give you the broader view you know if you're trying to achieve an objective um and you've clearly set out your objective as a business or as a group or as a society, um, you need the input of all different types of people to, to really yeah. get the best possible um, progress and outcomes. And I think, um, you know, that absolutely applies to supply chains as well, in the sense that, you know, with what you were talking about in terms of potentially like more onshoring and nearshoring and stuff like that, that is inevitably going to open up the opportunity for smaller suppliers as well, and more innovation and more diversity in your supply chain. And I think that's something, particularly when it comes to services procurement, um, is, is very important indeed, because ultimately services procurement is, is an extension of your, your company's workforce, whereas obviously your entire supply, supply chain is an extension of your company as well. So um, yeah, just the ability to see that, see the detail on that, and to be able to um, make the most effective use of that is, is crucial, and again, that sits with procurement um, and is really a very powerful indicator of the strategic role that procurement do have. 